Hi guys, welcome to the Apache and HD Access for Dummies course. My name is Dan Wellman and in 15 short videos I'll show you everything you need to know to get up and running with Apache and HD Access. Let's start right at the beginning. What is Apache? And HD Access for that matter. Apache is a web server. It listens on specific ports for incoming requests for resources like web pages and returns them as a response to the requesting client, which is usually a web browser. It's easily the most popular web server application in use on the internet. Over 50% of all web servers are running Apache. It's also been around for a long time, a very long time in fact in internet terms, since 1995, and has been right at the top spot for almost all of that time. The latest version, which is what we'll be using throughout the course, is version 2.4.7. Apache is open source, it's under current development, and can be extended with a wide variety of additional modules to enable or disable different features. Configuration can be handled in a variety of different ways, and that's where HD access files fit into the picture. While server-wide configuration can be handled through the use of plain text configuration files, HT access files can also be used to handle per directory configuration, overriding the server-wide settings where applicable. Apache isn't the only web server that supports HT access files either, so using them for configuration is a transferable skill. So over this course, we'll be looking at how to configure and use Apache itself, and look at some of the common modules and common usage scenarios and configuration, as well as delving into the how and why of HT access. Apache is a great tool for development as well. If you're a web developer, you're going to need access to a web server in order to recreate the conditions that your website or application will be running on in order to develop it. Apache can give you that environment. Speaking of which, let's get it set up and then we'll finish up for today. For previous versions of Apache, there were official installers that we could download and obviously these would install Apache for us. For the latest version, unfortunately, there isn't an installer. But don't worry, getting it set up and running is still pretty easy. So first of all, we need to download the files that Apache uses. So if we open up a web browser, we can search for Apache 2.4. That will give us some links here to the Apache org site, which is the official site. And then if we go over to the right here, there's a link for Microsoft Windows. And then if we scroll down a bit, we have this section here, downloading Apache for Windows. So we want to download a pre-compiled source. So we can do that by clicking one of these links. I normally use the Apache house link. So I've got the latest version of Windows, Windows 8.1. So I want to use the package built with the latest compiler, which is the VC11 version. So let's scroll down until we find the VC11 version and it's here. And we can just click one of these download locations. And we'll just wait for that to download. Okay, so if we were running one of the installers, it would create a folder for us in the program files folder. So that's what I like to do. I like to set it up as if it had been installed with an installer. So I'm going to go into the program files x86 folder and I'm just going to create a new folder now called Apache called Apache Software Foundation. And then inside this, I'm gonna create another folder and I'm gonna call this Apache 2.4. And then we can extract the archive that we've downloaded into this folder. Okay, so we basically set things up as if it had been installed by one of the installers. So if we were to go back and use one of the installers from a previous version, like um, Apache 2.2, for example, then this would set up a folder in the Apache Software Foundation folder, and it would be called Apache 2.2. I'm just gonna copy this into to here, just to tidy things up a bit. Great, 
And if we look in this folder, we can see all of the different files that make up Apache. So we'll be looking in this folder a number of times throughout the rest of the course. So we'll, we'll get to know some of the other files that are in these other folders, but we're not gonna worry too much about that for now. So we do have a little bit of uh, console work to do now. So if we just open up a Windows command prompt, we'll run it as administrator. And then we want to CD into the Apache bin folder. So what we want to do now is install Apache as a service so that it runs all of the time. And we can do this just by using a very simple command here. So the command that we want to run is HTTPD. We want to use the K switch and then choose install. And before I do that, actually, um, it looks like the folder name is still not right. Yeah. Okay, so let's just fix that quickly. Okay. So let's get that command prompt open again. And we want to go back into the bin folder. Great. Okay, so we want to run HTTPD, use the K switch, and choose install. And this will install Apache as a service so that it runs all of the time and it starts up when Windows starts up. So Apache should now be installed as a service. Um, it looks like there's a syntax error in the configuration file. Possibly that's a regression in the latest version. I, I've not noticed that before. And it's complaining that the server root must be a valid directory. So the server root should actually be this folder, Apache 2.4. Let's just have a quick look at the conf file and see what's going on. So we'll need to open up a text editor and we'll want to run this as an administrator as well. Okay, so server root. Probably want to make that a full path, so Let's try that. Okay, so let's see if we can start up the server now. It's been installed, but we need to start it. And we can do that with another very simple command. So HTTPD, use the K switch again, and then we'll choose start. And we want to allow access. And Apache should now be running. Let's just make sure it is. Yes, it's definitely running because it's saying that only one usage of each socket is available. So Apache must already be running because the socket is in use. So let's just see if we can see a local host. Okay, so Apache is running. We know that because we visited localhost in our browser and we can see the default Apache house page. And as it says here, the page is used to test the Apache house distribution of Apache after it has been installed. So if you can read this page, it means the web server is installed at this site and working properly. Yay. Great. Okay. So there's a couple more things that we want to do. So users of previous versions of Apache will know that there was a handy little utility that we could use, which ran in the system tray called Apache monitor. And that showed the status of all our Apache servers and it allowed us to restart the server and, and stuff like that. It's quite useful. So that's not installed by default now, but we can install it very, very easily. So if we look in the bin folder, we can see Apache monitor is here. What we want to do is just copy that into our, our startup folder. So the easiest way to get to the startup folder is if we use the run command and type in shell colon startup. When we hit enter, that will open up the startup folder. And we just want to copy this file. So that's the Apache monitor exe file. 
we just want to copy that into the startup folder. And now we can double click it to start it up for the first time. Is that running? It's not running yet. Okay, so yeah, we want to choose the more info link here. So Windows has protected my PC. It doesn't need to be protected, it seems in this case, but that's fine. So if we click the more info link, we'll get the button to run anyway. Let's take some risks. Come on. And we should find that that is running and it tells us that the Apache server is running because the icon is green. And if we if we open up this menu here by left clicking it, then we can stop the server. We won't get that warning every time we try to use it, by the way. And then we can start it again. And using it is as simple as that, really. But it's it's very, very useful. It means we don't have to open up the console every time we want to start Apache. So we're pretty much done now. Apache is installed and running, and we've installed the useful Apache Monitor utility. So in this lesson, we looked at what Apache and HD Access actually are, and we installed Apache and got it up and running. This course is aimed primarily at Windows users, as that's what I am myself. OS X users have a slight advantage here because Apache already comes installed on Macs. It just needs to be enabled. Um, a lot of the various configuration options and things that we'll be looking at throughout this course aren't platform specific and should be equally as valid on other platforms like OS X or Linux even. So in the next lesson, we're going to install PHP and configure Apache to use it as a module. Thanks for watching.